Most know her for her time in the idol group Zok, but besides being a fashion model, rock star and idol, she's also a domestic abuse survivor. In today's episode of Otaku Files, we explore the world of beauty and violence of Kati. Most of us outside of Japan may not be aware of some of the more interesting personalities within the Japanese otaku landscape. So I thought I'd do a little video series and try to shed some light on these individuals. This is Otaku Files. With her bewitching looks and don't care attitude, Kati, formerly known as Kashi Kati, has a very large and loyal following here in Japan. Although she is popular with the guys, as would be more unusual for more mainstream idols, Kati's fan base is largely female. As if it doesn't need repeating, Kati is quite the looker, and with many of her fans wishing to know the secrets of her beauty, Kati's makeup videos are very popular. But to start off Kati's story, let's go back a bit, and as is seemingly becoming a recurring theme with all the idols I've covered, we'll discover that life wasn't always so kind to Kati. Kati wanted to be an idol for as long as she could remember, but she finally made the decision to go down that path thanks to attending a Momoiro Clover Z concert, where apparently one of the members waved to her. Looking back, she understands that they were probably just waving to the crowd in general, but this action would change the course of Kati's life forever. And Kati didn't waste any time either. Around the age of 16, she became a starting member of the Lolita idol group Meltia under the name Tombo Kati. Founded in 2014 and branded as Lolita Idols from Harajuku, Meltia sang poppy idol songs while, as you can see, dressed in Lolita fashion. Kati though would end up leaving Meltia in 2016, however a huge turning point for Kati would soon follow. Kati auditioned for the Miss ID competition. The Miss ID competition was set up by publisher Kodansha to discover new talented women based not on just their looks but also their personality. The chosen girls could become, but wasn't just limited to, idols. With the Miss ID competition, Kati won the Omori Seiko prize. And yes, as some may already know, Omori Seiko would be the one to produce the idol group Zok, which both Omori Seiko and Kati would become members of. But before that, let's talk about the crappy thing that Kati was going through back home. And let's start by talking about Kati's hometown. Kati is from a city called Yokosuka, which is in the Kanagawa prefecture of Japan. Yokosuka is well known for a lot of different things, such as the Japanese and US naval bases, the birthplace of the Skajan, and also Hide, the legendary guitarist of X Japan. But Yokosuka was also known for something else, being the playground for a lot of Yankees, and I'll explain why this relates to Kati in just a bit. I've talked about Yankees in other videos as well, but essentially they're classed as delinquents or thugs, typically people you wouldn't want to come across in a dark alley. Besides their rough attitudes and preference for squatting down in front of combinis, Yankees have their own particular fashion sense which in fact includes wearing Yokosuka's very own Skajan. Now, getting back to Kati, she has an older brother, and apparently both her father and her brother were Yankees. Not only that, according to Kati, her older brother is somewhat famous in Yokosuka, as he was the head of a Bosozoku. As I've mentioned in a different video, Bosozoku are essentially biker gangs that get into fights and all kinds of trouble with the police. By the way, here's a picture of Kati's Onichan. I know, don't let the ears fool you. Unfortunately though, during their time living together, Kati's brother wasn't exactly a very nice Onichan, and as she has stated a number of times, she was subject to violent abuse by him. Needless to say, Kati hated her brother. As we'll also find out later on, this unfortunately won't be the only period where Kati experiences domestic abuse. After winning the Miss ID competition, she decided to move to Tokyo. I suspect this was also an excuse to get away from her brother. Apparently though, Kati's parents ended up divorcing with her brother and father moving to Okinawa. Just so you know, Kati doesn't hate her brother anymore 
and now they get along fairly well. Working some jobs here and there in Tokyo, Kati would have a place of her own. However, something would happen. She met the man of her dreams. Kati says that they met in Shibuya and that it was love at first sight. They started dating and not only that, he started living in Kati's place. Definitely not wasting any time. But just as quickly, Kati would find out that the external didn't reflect the internal. Turns out he was another man that would get violent when things didn't go his way. For example, when Kati didn't do the chores the way he wanted them to be done, like the laundry, he would hit her. And then afterwards, as is typical of most abusive relationships, would weirdly apologize to her. He also beat her if she didn't make different dishes for him. And then one day, he went too far, and apparently even threw a microwave. Kati had enough, and the two ended up fighting. Kati tried to make him leave, but in the end, he made her leave of her own place. Kati in Tokyo would temporarily become homeless. With no place to go and constantly being bothered by hosts, things weren't looking very good for Kati. That was until she reached out to someone she considers to be her savior, Yoshida Go. Honestly, I could make a whole video about Yoshida Go. He's a really interesting character, a critic, writer, and notable interviewer. I knew Yoshida Go for his idol interviews, but I had no idea he helped Kati out in this way. Yoshida Go let Kati have a spare room in Shinjuku Nichome. Yay. Eventually, Kati would get the call that she was waiting for, asking if she would be interested in joining the idol group that Omori Seiko was going to start. Kati instantly said yes. Once Kati met the other members and was told the group's name was Zok, she was then told a live event for them to appear in was already decided and was going to take place in a couple of months, so time to get practicing. I think I'll cover Zok in a different video, but suffice to say, they made a big impact on the scene at that time. Kati was introduced as Koko no Yokosuka Bakayanki, which we could loosely translate as the cool independent Yokosuka idiot Yanki, which would be her sort of catchphrase. Interestingly enough, even though her brother and father were Yankees, Kati herself is not, but being raised in that environment, she did adopt a bit of the Yankee attitude. It was also in Zok that Kati became good friends with fellow member Senlitsu Kanano. If you want to know more about Senlitsu Kanano and her troubled past, you can check out the video I made about her. Being in Zok fulfilled Kati's dream of being an idol, and she must have created some amazing memories for herself. However, in December 2020, through Twitter, Kati would announce her graduation from Zok the following February. There are a number of rumors as to why she decided to leave Zok, which I won't get into in this video, but she describes it as a difference in direction. Kati's activities, though, never stopped with Zok. Within the same year of her graduating Zok, she changed her name from Kashi Kati to Kati. She would then soon form the rock band Haze, being on guitar and vocals. As I've covered in Senlitz Kanano's video, a couple of years later, she and Kanano would form the idol unit Akuma no Kis. She has also released two books, one that tells more about her life and the other one on fashion. As I've mentioned before, Kati is really into makeup and she's also really into fashion. She is a particularly big fan of Korean brands. Now, one thing I should mention which would surprise all of you, despite her good looks and amazing fashion sense, Kati hates taking baths. Yes, you heard that right, and apparently there are days where she just doesn't take one, and her feet are known to smell pretty bad. I'm sure someone is into that. Lastly, I'd like to mention that Kati is also an amazing artist. Kati is a big inspiration for many of her fans who often send her messages asking her for life advice and how to get out of difficult times. No doubt, Kati has positively touched the lives of many. I honestly wasn't sure what I was going to discover with Kati. I knew her through Zok and Senlitz Kanano, but digging into her story, I discovered that she is a multi-talented individual that has overcome some pretty crappy times. I'm sure I haven't covered everything with Kati, so if there is anything you'd like to add or any opinions that you have, please share them in the comments below. Thanks again for watching this video, guys. I can't believe I'm over 7,000 subs. That's crazy. I really appreciate it. If you did like the video, please like and consider subscribing. And I'll be back with more videos, so thank you again. Stay tuned. Peace, guys.